Good afternoon, Year 4. Hope you're ready for our um, topic lesson this afternoon. We're going to be looking at some geography and some history. I'm going to share my screen with you. OK, I wonder if you could write today's um, learning objective, which is to explore the history of settlement names. And today's date is Monday, the 18th of um, January. OK, now last week, you remember, we were looking at settlements. We were learning about what a settlement was. We looked at um, hamlets, at villages, towns and cities. And today we're going to be looking at like the history of settlements. We're going to be looking at the names of the settlements and we're going to be working out how old they were and where was a good place to build them and who built them. So here we have a map of the UK, of, of Britain. We've got England, Wales, Northern Ireland and Scotland. And these little coloured dots there represent different settlements. Here are the names of the different settlements. We have Amesbury, London, Lincoln, Grimsby, Milton Keynes, Letchworth and Eversley. Now, these dates tell us when they were built. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video now and see if you can work out which order they go in from the very earliest to the most recent. So in chronological order. Pause and have a go at that now. Well done. Now you perhaps put them on a timeline like this. Here is my timeline. And the earliest settlement we can see is Amesbury, which was built 8,820 years before Christ was born. So that's only 10,000 years ago. Then the next settlement to be built was in London in AD 43. So 43 year, years after the birth of Christ. And then next is Lincoln and then Grimsby, Letchworth, Milton Keynes, and finally Ebbsfleet, which was built very recently in 2014. So settlements around Britain, have, some of them are really ancient, and some of them are quite recent. Let's find out a little bit more about settlements now. Now, I want just to imagine for a moment that we are an invader. We're invading Britain, and we want to think of the best place to build our settlement. And we've got three different places we could build it. We could build it in place A, place B, or place C, that should say. Let's call that C. Don't know why I've put it as two Bs. So I've changed that as a C there and change the background. OK, you might need to change that on your worksheet now. OK, now what I'd like you to do is decide which one you think is the best settlement. And you're going to end up writing a sentence which starts like this. I think the settlement is the best because. Now, before you make a decision, I want you to go through these questions and I want you to tick the answer you think best suits it. It might have more than one answer. So, for example, question number one said, which sites are close to a water supply? Well, A is on top of a hill. B's down here, oh sorry, C's down here in the middle of a marshland, and B, you can see, is right in the middle of two rivers meeting. So actually, I would put my cross there. Let's pause the video now, and then you have a go, filling in your sheet. OK, now let's have a go through. Let's go through each one. Which sites are sheltered from the weather? Well, if we look at A, that's on top of a hill. I don't think that's going to be very sheltered from the wind and the rain. It's quite exposed. So I don't think we can put um, a tick there or across there. Um, C is on flat land, so it would be a bit more sheltered. It's behind the hills, so it could be a bit more sheltered, but it's in a marshland. So if it rains a lot there, it's going to get very boggy. So again, B might be better because it's sheltered by the hills and it's on lower ground. It could have a bit of flooding, but it looks like it's the best one. So I'm going to put my tip, my cross there. Which sites are close to a supply of woods? Now we can't see any trees, but you can see these little dark little splats and splodges. They're probably the trees. So up on top of a hill, mm, there's not many trees up there. There could be more trees down in the flatland, so it's going to be B or C. Um, so we can probably put a, a little cross in both of these places, couldn't we? Now, 
what about this? Which sites are on flat land, which are good for farming? Well, again, A is no good because up on a hill, that's going to be no good for farming. All the rain will come down and it will wash away the plants and that's no good at all. C, a bit too boggy and a bit too wet. So again, not a great place. But B, again, is looking like our best place because that there is going to be a great place to do some farming. It's flat and it's near the river. So you're going to get lots of good nutrients there. Which sites would be protected against invaders? Hmm, now this is a bit this is a bit different, isn't it? Where do you want to be if there's invaders coming? Well, we know, don't we, from looking at settlements, especially last week in our history, that if you're on a hill, you've got a really good view, haven't you? So you can see for a long way away. So A could be a good place to be because you're on top of a hill and you can see all those invaders coming towards you. B, hmm, not so great here. You might have a good view across the whole flat land, but you have got those mountains behind you. And so that could cause a bit of a problem if the invaders are coming from that direction. And C, hmm, now you could be protected there. And of course, the marshland could make it quite boggy for the invaders to get through. And you have got a good view, but you're quite exposed. So I'm going to go for A in this instance. Which sites have the potential to develop a transport link? So where am I able, going to be able to move about to somewhere else? Maybe build a road, eventually maybe build a railway or a motorway or to travel by water. Now, A, not very good. You can't build a road very easily on a hill. So that's going to be a bit of a problem. Again, on a marshland, that's no good because it's going to be far too boggy. So I think B is going to be definitely my best route because I can travel by river. And then I might eventually be able to build a road or a railway next to the river. You'll notice that railways quite often go next to rivers, don't they? Because it's flat land. So I think B. So, oh, then I'm going to put across. So overall, you can see from my tip from my crosses that the settlement I think is best is B. So I'm going to put, oh, I can't do it. I'm going to write it instead. Is B. Now, B is best because it's got a good water supply, it's reasonably sheltered from weather, it's got a good supply of firewood um, that would be brilliant for fuel and also building. It's great land for farming, so I'm going to be well fed and there's potential for transport links. However, it could be a little bit dangerous for invaders, in which case I might want to build a big fence around my settlement to keep me nice and safe. OK, let's move on now. Now, we've been talking about invaders. But what kind of invaders came to Britain? Well, we've been learning about the Celts and you've been learning about the Romans as well. I'm going to learn more about the Romans next week and this week, too. And you will notice that the Romans, when they came to Britain eventually, and you'll find out more about that, is that they did build settlements. Look on the map here. Here are a lot of Roman settlements. Do you notice? anything about these Roman settlements. Pause the video now, have a good look. What do you notice about these Roman settlements? Well done. OK, now you might notice that a lot of these Roman settlements seem to be built hmm, sort of in a line together, don't they? They follow a line. That means they probably follow a road. Also, you might notice that they tend to end in this sound. Chester, Chester, Caster, Chester. And most of the settlements are in England as opposed to other parts of the UK. There's only one up in Scotland, but actually I don't think that's a Roman settlement. I think that's just been put on there because you'll notice here, this is where the Romans actually built a wall. I wonder if you can find out the wall that they built there to try and keep out the invading forces. So let's look and see and find out a little bit more why their names are like that. OK, now Roman names tend to have this as an ending, Chester, Caster or Cester. And this means castle, which tells us, doesn't it, that when they first built their settlement, actually they were first building a castle, probably to defend themselves. Now, there weren't just Roman invaders. In fact, Britain has been invaded many times. They've been invaded by the Anglo-Saxons and by the Vikings and later on by the Normans. The last time Britain was invaded was in 1066. So before that, 
Before 1066, there were lots of places that had already been built. And when the invaders came, they named them and they named them after something. So, for example, like we've seen, the Romans meant castle in their suffix um, at the end of their words. And the Anglo-Saxons quite often had this as a suffix, ham or ton or ford. And if a word or a town name ends in ham, it means village. And if it ends in ton, it means farm. And if it ends in ford, it means river crossing. Now, the Vikings, when they came to Britain and they started making their settlements, they ended their words with this or their settlement names with by or thorpe or toft. So if it has the, the, the town name ends in by, it means village. If it ends in Thorpe, it means farm. And if it ends in Toft, it means house. So it tells us a little bit of a clue as to why they built the settlement. Maybe the settlement started off, if you're a Viking, because it was a farm. Or maybe the settlement started off simply as one house. Or maybe it was an Anglo-Saxon settlement. It started off as being somewhere where you could cross a river really easily. Now, we're going to do a little bit of investigating now. Now, you're going to need the sheet that I've posted on Dojo today. And on this sheet, you will see there is a map of the UK. And what I would like you to do is I'd like you to go onto this online map. I've used the Google map here and there's a link which you can click on, which will take you through to a map. And I'd like you to have a good investigation on that map to see if you can find any examples of Roman, Viking and Anglo-Saxon settlements. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to mark them onto your map and obviously write the names in. And remember, this is what the ending would be. So if you're looking for Roman names, the town or um, city might end with Chester or Castor or Cester. If it's an Anglo-Saxon town, it might end in the suffix ham, ton or ford. And if it's a Viking um, town or village or city, it might end in um, Thorpe, Toft or By. So have a good look and see how many you can find. Um, you're going to need this sheet to help you today and you're definitely going to need a map. You might have a map in your house, in which case you can use that instead. OK, I look forward to seeing what you've investigated today and later on in our Zoom meeting, you can tell me all about the things that you found out. Have a good afternoon, year four.